On Monday night, scores of pro-Palestine protesters descended on the family home of Tory MP Tobias Elwood. The two MPs have been murdered in recent years. In 2016, Labour politician Joe Cox was killed by a right-wing extremist. And in 2021, Tory Sir David Amos was murdered by an Islamic State terrorist. Nigel Farage and former Labour MP Stephen Pound spoke about this issue last night on the GB News election special. It's a slight tangent, maybe not for now, but I thought what happened... OK, so what they basically said was, who'd be a politician now? Stephen Pound said in all of his years, he's never seen it as volatile, as febrile and dangerous as it currently is now. And joining me to discuss this is a former military and intelligence officer, Philip Ingram. Philip, welcome to the show. It seems at the moment, Philip, that tensions from the Middle East are spilling onto British streets. Tensions are high and we have a situation now where the mob are forming and they are marching on politicians' homes, sending them record amounts of death threats. And Philip, my question is, where is this going? And will it force decent people from even entering the trade in the first place? Well, I think it is stopping decent people from entering the trade and it's stopping good politicians remaining in the trade. We've got the government minister, Mike Freer, uh, is leaving because his constituency office was burnt down and he and his husband have had um, uh, direct threats and MPs seem to have normalised the threats that are there. This is this should not be normal in democratic society. It's it's OK to uh, for MPs to have differences politically and have differences of, of opinion, but that shouldn't turn into the sort of hate that we're seeing out across society. And I think this is a wider societal issue where we're seeing hate being tolerated in a way that it just leads to and breeds more hate. And that's just wrong. But Philip, does this stem from the fact that we've seen a recent outbreak, undeniably since October the 7th, of more social unrest, more civil unrest on the streets? Um, and this emboldens people when they see the police specifically standing off and allowing this to continue. Those That mob gets boldened, and now they're outside politicians' houses, and not just Tories, they're doing it outside Labour Party MPs too, and it creates an atmosphere of toxicity, and in the end, MPs like Mike Freer will simply remove themselves from the profession or never join it in the first place, and that is not a free and democratic society, that is the, the thin end of totalitarianism. Oh, I, I agree completely, and I think that's part of the problem. You know, I think the police not reacting uh, very visibly, whenever crimes are being committed and whenever you're, you're getting these sorts of situations, just emboldens other groups to go and do the same. But I think there's a, a much bigger problem beneath this. You know, we've heard, um, we've got politics by soundbite now. And a lot of the soundbites that we hear coming out from some very senior politicians in the very recent past have been hate filled. Um, and if we're getting our politicians, our, our leaders, and within the country or those that are aspiring to be our leaders in the country coming out with hate speech how can we then start to go and criticize that coming out from people in all the different groups and elsewhere and since the 7th of october attacks there's been a 589 percent increase in anti-semitic activity across the country and that isn't being stamped on hard both by the police but also by general society you know it's all of us you know we, we've all got a responsibility here if you see any unacceptable behavior most people will turn their heads and, and shrink away from it and and uh, um you know hide and say I'll, I'll i'll not get involved in case something happens to me that's wrong in a society OK, Philip, let's just listen to that clip now between Stephen Pound and Nigel Farage from last night. It's a slight tangent, maybe not for now, but I thought what happened um, outside Mr Elwood's home in Bournemouth two nights ago <coughs> with nearly 100 people protesting for four hours. Family home. Screaming. At, I mean, Stephen's been an MP, I've been an MP. You know, yeah. you know we can all put up with a bit of stick. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that comes up, you know, you stick your head above the parapet and you yeah, expect... Yeah, of course. You know, and, and I think we take it, and as somebody said earlier on, you know, we, we're all grown-ups now, but I've never seen anything like this. Awful, wasn't uh, it? This is, this is the worst that I've ever seen. And, and you know, in my own patch, we've got groups of people with megaphones screaming outside the MP surgeries. But to actually get that, when I remember when I was Stephen Timms' PPS, when he got stabbed in the court, yeah. you know, we know, we've lost two good MPs. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. We, we, it's, yeah. David it's too, Davis and yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. too easily forgotten yeah. that in the last 10 years, there have been two yeah. political assassinations. And so many good people. 
people, and I know people in business, entrepreneurs, who have thought about politics. They won't touch it with a barge. And they're scared of it. Yeah. They're scared of it. They're also scared of social media. Yeah. They're scared of the fact that every mobile phone's a camera. There's no privacy. It, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, and look, Let's not link this to Mr. Egan, it wouldn't be fair. But a general point, we are not getting high caliber people going for Parliament. And Philip, isn't that the inevitable outcome? The strong won't get involved and we'll end up with more identical politicians, more bland politicians, and the best brains will just go and do other things. Well, it is. It's, there's, there's nothing that would encourage anyone that I know to go uh, into politics because you know, they get ripped to pieces in every way, shape or form. And whenever you're getting you know, this, this sort of level of attacks on them, it, it just attracts even further. You know, I do know that the parliamentary um, uh, security people, uh, along with the police, are putting an awful lot of effort into making sure that every MP gets a proper risk assessment. They do for their surgeries because they have to engage with the public in their constituencies. Um, and there's there's an increased amount of advice that's been given to them. Um, you know, that those projects I have uh, been briefed on and know the organisations that are putting those together. So there, there's a lot of effort being put in to try and keep things safe. But when we see pictures like we did from outside Tobias Elwood's house and the police not doing anything, that sends the wrong message. The police need to start being much more robust and stopping these things because you know that that was huge, hugely threatening behaviour aimed at not just him but his family.